Hello everyone, welcome to Static GK quiz number 182. This video is aimed to help you with your central and state government job examinations. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. The original constitution of India had how many schedules? The correct answer is 8. Schedules are lists in constitution of India that categorizes and tabulates bureaucratic activities and policy of the government. Indian constitution had originally 8 schedules. The ninth was added via First Amendment Act, while tenth schedule was first added by Thirty Fifth Amendment, which made Sikkim an associate state. Once Sikkim became a state in India, the tenth schedule was repealed, but later added once again by Fifty Second Amendment Act, nineteen eighty five, in context with the anti defection law. Eleventh schedule was added by Seventy Third Amendment and has list of subjects under the Panchayat Raj institutions or rural local government, 12th schedule was added by 74th amendment and enlist the subjects under municipalities or urban local government. The 9th schedule was added to the constitution in which year? Correct answer is 1951. The 9th schedule to the Indian constitution was introduced through article 31b by the first constitution amendment act 1951. The object of the 9th schedule was to save land reform laws enacted by various states from being challenged in the courts to facilitate agrarian reforms of the government of India. Which among the following schedules is related to the responsibilities of municipalities? If you see the diagram or the image on your right hand side, you can see that this is a, a abbreviation, not an abbreviation, it's a shortcut way of memorizing what each amendment, sorry, which schedule, each schedule stands for what exactly. So uh, there are 12 schedules in the Indian constitution and you can see that tiers of old PM, each letter stands for what each schedule uh, covers. So if you go to the 12th schedule, which is M, it is municipalities, which means that the correct answer here would be 12th schedule. Who among the following reserves the right to initiate the constitutional amendment? The correct answer is Parliament of India. Part 20 of the Constitution of India has only one article, that is Article 368, that deals with the amendment of constitution. As per this article, Parliament may add, amend or repeal any provision of the constitution as per the procedure laid down for this purpose. However, in Kesavanand Bharati case 1973, the Supreme Court has ruled that the Parliament cannot amend those provisions which constitute the basic structure of the constitution. The right to constitutional remedies in India is available to whom of the following? The correct answer is any person for enforcing any of the fundamental rights conferred on all persons. Since the fundamental rights under Article 14, 21, 21A, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and 28 are available to both citizens as well as non-citizens who are not enemy aliens, any violation of these will attract enforcement of Article 32 of the Indian Constitution on direction by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. The reasonableness of the restrictions placed on fundamental rights is decided by which of the following? The correct answer is the courts. The court is called upon to ascertain the reasonableness of the restriction and not of the law which permits the restriction. A law may be reasonable, but the restriction imposed by it on the exercise of freedom may not be reasonable. Which among the following fundamental rights is available to Indian citizens but not to aliens? Correct answer is freedom of expression and speech. The Indian constitution guarantees various fundamental rights to an Indian citizen. One such right is freedom of speech and expression under Article 19.1a of the constitution. Freedom of expression enables a person to express his opinions freely with certain reasonable restrictions. Which among the following fundamental rights has been deleted by 44th Amendment Bill? The correct answer is right to property. By the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act in 1978, the right to property was taken away from the category of fundamental rights and made as a legal right. Article 19.1f, which guarantees the citizens the right to acquire, hold and dispose of property and Article 31 relating to compulsory acquisition of property have been omitted. It was, however, 
in be ensured that the removal of property from the list of fundamental rights would not affect the right of minorities to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice a person when decides to make an application to acquire citizenship of india by registration must have finished his living in india for how many years the correct answer is 5 years as per the provisions of section 51g of the citizenship act 1955 A person who is registered as an overseas citizen of India for 5 years and is residing in India for 1 year out of the above 5 years is eligible to apply for Indian citizenship. Due to an excessive number of refugees incoming to India from Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, the Citizenship Act 1955 was amended and citizenship by birth was conferred on those who have been born on or after January 26, 1950 and Jan June 30 1987 Indian nationality law largely follows the jus sanguinis or citizenship by right of blood as opposed to jus soli which is citizenship by right of birth within the territory the president of india is termed the first citizen of india that's all for today's quiz until the next video goodbye